money saving is the accuracy and the, the way this whole workflow works. Workflow keeps you calm. And the, when you do this all digital and you have to seat that crown, you're not sweating. You know that if you've done a completely digital system, that crown is going to fit very, very nicely and your seating time is very small. You don't have to sweat it. The temporaries are just a pain in the neck. Put the temporaries in, they fall out, they break, they shatter, glue them in, you use all sorts of different things. And when the patient comes back, you have to re anesthetize that patient. But if you have the patient in the chair, take the, the old restoration apart, you make your one visit dentistry. So there are companies you can export your scan to. But you literally can call them on the phone or send them an email or text and say, can you make me the crown? Do your scan, you push a button, send it out to the company. Some of them will give it right back to you. They'll do it right on the spot and shoot it right back to you. Or overnight, shoot it to your bill. So you come in the morning and the crown is finished. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one. Bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease. We're going to do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists, episode number 351. I'm your host, Andrew Johnston, and thank you so much for making us a part of your day. So today is part four of four of the episodes featuring lectures given through Dexas Imaging's Dexas Days that has been going on all month long. And on this episode, we'll be featuring the incomparable Dr. Paul Feuerstein. He will be talking today about digital imaging and its implications. So many offices are doing in-office fabrication restorations. They're doing milling, um, they're doing 3D guides, that it's inevitable that we will all be affected at some point in our careers. And I cannot say enough great things about working with Dexas for this month. A special shout out to Jessica Williams for making this happen with her and her team. Also, thank you to Dr. Lou Schumann for connecting us through his Celerant Consulting Group. I feel generally this month has been fantastic. It's, it was a great concept to have CE you know, Monday through Thursday for a whole month. It hasn't been done that I am aware of before. Um, and I think that it really worked out great for everyone to bring you, the listeners, some amazing CE heavy shows for this month. So thank you for everyone that was involved and, and for making this happen. Next week, we'll go back to our normal format, though, with a roundtable discussion on instrumentation. This one will be featuring Jessica Atkinson, Malia Lewis, and Amanda Hill. And we record this over at RDH Under One Roof. It's, it's a good one. We all had a good time making it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button on your podcast app so you don't miss it. And then a little bit later on this month, in fact, I think it's going to be in just a couple of weeks, on October 7th and 8th in St. Louis is the Perio Protect annual meeting. I highly recommend this one. Details are on their website if you want to see it, perioprotect.com. I will be there, as will several other people who you've, you've heard on the podcast before. So if you can make it, please do. And then there's the ADA SmileCon the following week, and that one is in Houston. We will be podcasting from the main stage from 11.15 a.m. to 12.15 on Friday, October 14th. So if you want to watch us, we'll be up on the stage in the exhibit hall. And then also recording shows from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. from the booth, which I know those times kind of overlap a little bit, but we'll be in either one of those two spaces. So if you're around, please drop by, say hello. We'd love to see you. I think that's it for me. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. A tale of two hygienists. Hey friends, quick pause in the show to remind you about the CE offered for several of our episodes. All you have to do is click into the show notes and follow the link to the CE Zoom website. Answer a few of those questions about the episode correctly and you'll be rewarded the appropriate amount of CEUs. This wouldn't be possible without a partnership with our friends at TempStars. TempStars is more than just a temp and a placement service. They are clinician led and education focused and strive to perfectly match individuals and dental offices. Learn more about tempstars.com or go back and listen to some of their tip episodes. They are absolutely worth the listen. And now, back to the show. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Nice to see you all. So I, I, I titled this, Should You Throw Out Your Impression Material? Yet. 
and I'll give you some answers. And I think that everybody has to know a little bit about what the, the word iOS and digital impressions and one visit crowns and mills and things like that. So before I even start, I'm going to talk fast, and that that means we'll probably be finished early if I talk very fast, so I have to be careful. But my email address is here, and I'll give it to you a couple of times. It's simple, Dr. Paul at toothfairy.com. That's the most important thing that you should find. So as I run through these the information, the information, I can't do live answers during the presentation, but after we can answer questions. Um, anything you want to set, send me an email any time of day or night, pretty much. I'm on the East Coast, but I'm, I'm up pretty late. And even if it's a week from now, a month from now, three months from now, just if you have some question, just get a hold of me at drpaul2theory.com. So just a quick what's, uh, bio here is I grew up in New York City in a little apartment building. And I went to State University of New York, Stony Brook University. And at this school, I studied actually chemistry, biochemistry, engineering, math, science, physics. And, and my minor was music. I'm a professional musician. And I spent a lot of time on the stage without a PowerPoint clicker and traded that in lately. I play a lot of instruments and we'll talk about that as we go along. I went to New Jersey College of Dentistry, graduated, I'm an old guy, graduated in 1972. And right after we graduated, they changed the name of the school to UMDNJ and they sent us a second diploma. So I actually have two dental school diplomas on my wall. And some people will take a look and they go, hmm, did it take this guy two times to get through dental school or is that a good thing or a bad thing? And then a few years ago, we get this notification. They changed the name of the school again to Rutgers. And they actually said, we can send you another diploma. And I said, I, I think two is enough. And so some of you know, have seen me around. I've been around for a long, long time. And this showed up on Facebook one time. This was, uh, it said, Santa Claus giving a lecture on digital radiography at the California Dental Association meeting. I, was, I went to school in the 60s. I'm still a child of the 60s. Uh, I have the hair of the 60s because I can. And it really gets my friends upset because they don't have any. So that's, that's, that, that's my, my thing. So I live in Massachusetts in a town called Lowell, Massachusetts. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this stuff, this is called snow. That's what it looks like in the winter around here. And if you use your snow blower for about a half an hour when it's zero degrees, you get ice all over your face. And so that has been called the snow gnome on occasion. But the city of Lowell is actually interesting because we have an Academy Award winning movie that was filmed in Lowell. It's called The Fighter, about a fighter named Mickey Ward, a boxer. And uh, Christian Bale won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in this, in this uh, movie. So he became fairly famous. And wouldn't you know, this past winter, something happened on my street, right on my street. George Clooney shows up there and he's filming a movie. They found this little house, this little weird house, little brown house and decided it was a perfect house for this particular movie called The Tender Bar. And they closed the street down and they kept having old, old cars driving up and down the street and people walking up and down the street and there were cameras and there were things going on. And George himself was very, very cordial, except for one thing, it was during the tail end of COVID. He would say, he was wearing a face shield like we wear at work. And he would say, please, I'll be glad to talk to you. Just stand six feet away from me and don't cough on me. That was his whole thing. So the movie did come out. It's called The Tender Bar. And also Ben Affleck was around and some other people. Christopher Lloyd from, uh, from Back to the Future was there. Um, they weren't hanging around and talking to the people in the streets, but they were around and it was, it, was, it was very exciting to see this whole thing. So Lowell has been there twice and actually some other movies we've had down there. So who am I? My uh, background is in the technology, as I said, in the, in the sciences. And so my blend in dentistry and the sciences and computer science, especially in pro computer programming, helped me to evolve as dentistry evolved, as the world evolved, when it became digital all of a sudden. So I was picked up at some point in 1999 by Dental Economics and wrote a column every single month for about, for about technology for Dental Economics. And then there was like a baseball trade. And so I was traded over to Dentistry Today, but I said, I want to be on the cover. And they did that. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll work for you. And so I had a column continuing in Dentistry Today and then I did a lot of work and became another cover guy. So I had two covers. But as a musician, I thought, you know, this isn't really what my goal is in life. My goal would be to see this and this. And pre-COVID, every other Saturday, I would sit around with a bunch of friends of mine. And we'd sit around and play guitar. And uh, unfortunately, as, as COVID went, the, the whole group fell apart. And we haven't, we haven't really gotten together for almost two years now. And for any musicians out there, 
This is a 1978 Martin V28 Customs, quite a guitar. And you'd say, wow, how'd you pick that up? Well, I bought it in 1978 because I'm an old guy. So it's now, it now has, has some value. I think I could pay my kids tuition if it's with that guitar. So what about golf? I missed golf when I was in dental school. So I decided to do something else. I decided to go to dental meetings. And I go to every single dental meeting that I can get my feet on. And the reason I go to these meetings is I have a sort of a passion for dentistry and for equipment and, and teaching. And I go up and down these aisles and I put a lot of miles on my feet, my shoes, my, my, uh, my Fitbit. And I try to go in the aisles and see companies and talk to the manufacturers and talk to the product managers and talk to distributors and people who invented the products and say, what is this? What is this? What is this? And in my big lecture courses, which take a full day classes, I show some products that no one's ever seen before, which we will see here today. Some interesting new products that have come up, come around, and we'll go through some of that before. So let's get to the point. Uh, we're here to talk about impression scanners, digital impression scanning, and they're all similar in, in the respect and they, they do something specific for us. They do a digital impression. And let's take a look at the whole thing. So you go to these meetings and we speak to all the different manufacturers, as I do. And the most important thing for this presentation right now is I don't work for any of these companies. I don't get paid a dime from any of these companies unless, unless I do a project for them. I'm not involved with sales. I'm not involved with anything like that. I am here to tell you what the whole space is about and what you should be looking for. And whether I talk about one cup company A or company B, I don't really, I shouldn't say it out loud, but I don't really care which one you get. I want to make sure you do get one of these. And I want to give you some handle on how to decide which one to get. So again, if anybody just popped in a little bit later, my email address, drpaula2theory.com. Also Facebook and Twitter. When I see something interesting, I'll post it on one of those two sites, Paul Feuerstein, DMD, Dental Technology or Dr. Paul F. If you come to me personally, you're going to find out things about music and eating food all over the place, and you don't want to see that. So you go to the booth, and you're staring at this machine, and they go, Doc, Doc, you need to get impressions digital because patients hate impressions. And you go, yeah, I guess, you know, the people gag, and, and, and but what percentage of the patients gag? The ones you remember, you certainly remember. But, you know, that's not the reason to get this system. Because think about this, a patient comes in with a problem and you say, you know, you need a crown. And they go, a crown? Can't you just like fix this thing with a filling? No, no, you need a crown. And so what's a crown? Well, you, we reshape the tooth and we make this thing. And they go, what do you mean reshape it? You don't have to drill, do you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate the drill. Don't tell me I need Novocaine. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you, yeah, we have, I hate Novocaine. So... You get in there and you do your work for about 20 minutes and then you have the nerve to put this slop in their mouth and say, bite on this gooey stuff. So that's the impression. So the impression is part of the whole process. So, but, you know, we all have patients that don't like impressions and get, and they have patients like I do who don't give a darn. And so these are two alginates. I still use alginate impressions and I, I actually use a little barrier in the back of, of, of periphery wax. I took this impression on a man and I came out and I stared at it. And he goes, what's wrong with it? I said, nothing, nothing. I mean, he didn't blink an eye. And two weeks later, two weeks later, I had a woman in had a very high vault. And I took this impression. And I did the same thing. And she's like, is it okay? Go, yeah, yeah, you're fine. So I have a friend who teaches general anesthesia and uh, in dentistry. And he says, Paul, he says, when you don't, I have something for you to show you, your students in your classes. We had a patient under anesthesia, and one of, my, one of my interns took this alginate impression. Now, there's an impression. That's the uvula, baby. See, the patient did fine, by the way, because thank God the stuff set. <laughs> so these people don't hate impressions, so that's not the reason to get this. So you're going to save money, Doc. Uh, I'm going to spend $30,000, $40,000, $100,000 saving. Yeah, 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 but, you know, there's no impression material, there's no impression trays, and there's all sorts of things, and and that's not the reason. So I'm going to give you a chart that shows where the actual money goes. But the big money saving is the accuracy and the, the way this whole workflow works. The workflow keeps you calm. And the, when you do this all digital, which we'll explain, and you have to seat that crown, you're not sweating. You know that if you've done a completely digital system, that crown is going to fit very, very nicely. And your seating time 
is very small. You don't have to sweat it. And something goes wrong, then something's really wrong. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. So first of all, the impressions are faster. And I can say that the, I think the fastest material, as far as I know right now, is, uh, is 3M's Imprint 4. And it sets in a little over 90 seconds, which, by the way, I've tried. It's very fast. A digital scan. Let's talk about single tooth dentistry, a triple tray. You take a triple tray with a digital system. You scan the lower, 30 seconds. You scan the upper, 30 seconds. And you take a buckle bite, which will throw you. And that's another 15. So you're talking about a minute and a half tops. So it's a faster impression. Hold that thought because we're going to talk about that in a minute. When you take your digital, your traditional impression, there's something that every single person here does. You put the impression in the patient's mouth, you hold it, and you close your eyes and say the impression prayer. And you say, oh my gosh, I hope I don't get one of these things. Torn margins, missing margins, the stuff didn't set properly, the trace showing through. All sorts of things can go wrong. The dental labs love these things because you send an impression and say, hey, don't worry about, you know, just I missed that margin, but can, can you like fudge it and fix it for me? You don't have the impression prayer anymore. If you do the digital impression, it's on the screen. It's what you see is what you get. They used to say something called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And then how about the accuracy? I can honestly say you're going to get perfect margins and contacts. And let's think about dye stone for a second. You have an impression, you pour it with stone. Now, in dental school, what are we supposed to do? 50 milliliters of water at a certain number of degrees and mix it for a certain amount of time with, this, with 40, 40 grams of plaster. You, th- you just dump it in the bowl and you go like, mix it up like this and you get what you get. So immediately your dye is wrong. By maybe microns, but it's wrong. You make a dye, or the laboratory makes a dye, and they pour hot wax on this thing. They'll make some uh, on, the, on the wax, and they go around the margins to clear off the margins using a little Hollenbeck or something. Little flakes of plaster disappear. So when you see it in the crown, unless it's a beautiful gold crown with nice bevels, you say, yeah, I can feel the margin. It's closed, but I can feel the margin. And then the patient, put, you put it in the patient's mouth, they go, well, doc, you know, it's a little tight between my teeth. What happened there? Well, in the lab, they had a stone model. They're putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. Little flakes of the contacts disappear. So it's a little tight. So, you know, you do a little adjustment here, a little adjustment there. And with digital, it is it is what it is. It just goes in. The contacts are what you told the computer to make it do. The margins are perfect. What about the occlusion? A little interesting here. First of all, if you take a, I'm just go harp on a triple tray. When you have a triple tray, how many times have anybody listening sent the triple tray to the limbs? Says, uh, the patient kind of bit wrong. So could you hand articulate that? And you're only using one side of the arch. You don't have a cross arch if you're using a triple tray, which is most what most people do. Um, or you take the triple tray and you take a bite and you use something like a blue mousse material. You still can't see if the patient is closed. With a digital impression, there's nothing in their mouth. So you say closed and you can see this, in this way, this way, this way. So you just can actually have your, have your assistant put the patient in a headlock like this. And you can take a bag, it's called a buckle scan. So you have the teeth in occlusion and centric, and you scan from the buckle. So what happens when the crown comes back? The contacts are good. The margins are good. The patient bites vertically. Oh, pretty good, doc. But when I grind a little bit, I can feel a little bit. How long is that going to take to do the lateral excursions? And to be honest with you, there's some new software that's actually taking care of that too. But let's take this as it is. The most interesting thing is I had a chance at early on to help develop one of the systems, which well, I, I may as well tell you right now, it's nothing secret. There was a company in Massachusetts where I am called Bronte's Technologies. And it was myself and a bunch of engineers from MIT and some, a bunch of smart people and some laboratory technicians and we developed a new scanner. And we, we spent a lot of time working on that. And as we were working on that, the dentists who were helping us, we were sending out the scanners and having dentists do a traditional impression, digital impression, the preps got better. Think about your loops. When you first got the 2X loops, your preps got a little bit better because you could see things you never saw before. Then you went to 3X and 4X. With a digital impression, it's on a screen. It's about 20X. So you start looking at, the, at what you're doing. You go, wow, did I do that? So everybody gets a little better just by seeing what, they, what they're doing. Incidentally, this company called Bronte's got a knock on the door one day from a little small company called 3M. And 3M said, uh, we'd like to buy your company. And these guys said, no, 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 we're not really ready to sell I said, well, how about $100 million? Ah, good idea. I wasn't one of the owners, <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun to be with them. 
So anyway, so much, so be it. So I spend too much time on Facebook, but I'm in some, some forums. One of the Facebook forums is a dental lab forum. And they said, well, here's the list. So look at the dental office. This is what you're saving. No plastic bags, no, no impression, no, no PVS, no plastic trays, no adhesive, no wax, no disinfectants, no paper tickets, no fuel to send it to the lab, and nothing gets lost in the mail. Or somebody picks up, the, the, picks up your models and drops it on the ground somewhere. Or it's an accident on the way to the lab. And the laboratory, they're not making stone models anymore. They're not using wax. They're not using stone. They're not using things. So there is a giant savings, which actually is being passed on to us. If those of you who are doing zirconia crowns, which is darling right now, you can get some of these zirconia crowns anywhere from $100 down to $50, $30. I've seen $30 crowns. I mean, there's, there's differences, and there's a whole story about what's better. But I'd say 50, 60, 50, 60 to 80, 90, 80 or $90 is pretty good compared to PFMs that we're paying. Now, let's just hold that thought for a little while. But here's something really nice. Here's the workflow. So this is not my case. This is the Dr. Capone, friend Dr. Capone. And, but the concept is here. I'm going to do two crowns on the lower arch. So I have the patient sitting in my chair. I anesthetize the patient, and then I go and do a hygiene check. Why? Because my assistant takes a full upper, a full lower arch scan, and the buckle bite. But you're saying, well, wait, 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 you didn't prep the teeth yet. That's okay. I have all the basic stuff done. I come back in the room. All I have to do is prep two teeth. So what do I do? I go to the computer. I erase the two teeth I'm prepping on the, on the scan. I go ahead, prepare the two teeth and then push a magic button and scan those two teeth and it all stitches it together. So I, my chair time is just really prepping the, prepping the teeth, retraction and scanning two teeth. That's unbelievable. Now, I finish the case, I include the case on the computer and the computer says to me something, it says, you don't have enough interocclusal distance. Let's say I didn't have this computer. So what happens to most of us? You go ahead, you finish your prep, you take your final impressions, and you go and make your temp. And you start grinding and grinding and grinding, and all of a sudden, you almost have a hole through the temp. And you go, whoops, I didn't, I didn't do enough occlusal reduction. So what do you do? Are you going to re go back to the patient and prep, re prep it and take another triple tray impression? Nah. You know what you do? You call the lab. You go, hey, I need a little bit more room. So could you reduce the opposing for me? or give me a little reduction coping, which by the way, I've, I've never had success with reduction copings. Let's look about digital system here. We did this, we occluded the case, and all of a sudden the computer says, you don't have enough reduction. Okay, take a little bit of ground bar, drop it, drop it a little bit, get a little bit more occlusal, go back and rescan that one tooth or the both teeth, whatever it is, boom. This saves your brain. This saves your stomach. You don't have to worry about it. You, the computer helps you figure out all these things as you're going along. So these are some of the reasons why do you want digital impressions? Just amazing. So let's say you take impressions and you send it to the dental lab. Well, the dental labs don't want to deal with plaster anymore. So when you send the dental the impression to the lab, they actually can scan it. Now, if you have a digital system, you can actually send the digital impression to the dental lab or you can make it in your own office, a single crown. So you have a couple of crowns, you can do certain things in the office on the same visit. Now I said, all of them, they're gonna say, well, I know this one particular company that makes a scanner, but they don't have a mill, hold that thought. So the workflow is this, you send an impression, digital impression or a model or whatever you're sending. And they, if you don't have it in digital form, they have a little machine school, the scanner. So they take the impression, they put this in a little scanner, this is just one of the scanners that's available. And your computer's on, your, your, your margins and your, your prep is on the screen. Now, they push a button and some software says, here's what the crown's supposed to look like, Did, ideally. And, you know, so it, it's, a, it's called a, prep, a proposition. And you get the proposition, and, and, but you might want to make a slight difference, but you don't really need a dentist to do this. You can get some kid who's good at video games to do this. So the labs are hiring a bunch of smart kids who are very, very good with video and very good with 3D imaging. And they're the ones who are designing your crowns. I mean, some of the time being so facetious, but that's, that's the idea of how it works in the laboratory. And then what happens after they design the crown? Well, many of you are familiar with, I'll just say the word CEREC as a generic term for, for right now, have little blocks then you can carve out a block that's carved out one or two crowns. But the labs don't use little blocks. 
They have a milling center. They have a big, 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 big mill. It has a gigantic circle. It's about the size of a hockey puck. And they sit there, and when they have four or five cases, they can design the cases on that one block and say, here's what we need. And then the machine just goes out like that and cuts a bunch of crowns and bridges into that one block. So the lab can spend a small amount of money on the very on a block and get 10 cases or 20 cases on one block. So that's how it all works. And this is where the zirconia is coming from and the Emacs CAD and some of the other things that you're seeing. This is what makes it so interesting, so easy, and why the costs are dropping down because their labs are making multiple crowns on one piece of, one piece of zirconia. Now it's not, uh, there are different types of blocks and different zirconias and, and that's where the prices they've come different. Um, so, but again, just, I wanna give you a little food for thought on this whole thing. So having said this, I went around to a few labs and said, well, so what's going on? Well, this is our lab. I don't see a sink in there. I don't see plaster. I don't see vibrators. I don't see anything. I see people sitting there with a computer designing crowns and bridges and implants and things like that in a row. And where's the lab behind these people? Full of equipment, all sorts of things, 3D printers, mills, the design things. Just that's what a lab looks like. So it's all digital. Now, this is expensive stuff. I mean, you're talking about, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for these machines. So I really feel for the smaller laboratories right now because you have to make an investment of all the hardware and software and everything else. So what's actually happened is there are some gigantic labs that are now laboratories for the laboratories. So if you have a small laboratory or you have a technician who's a small laboratory and cannot afford to have 15 printers and mills, they have the capability of, take, of doing their design on their computer, sending it off to a, a different laboratory, which will, man, will fabricate the basic restoration, send it back to your technician, and then your technician can do all the finished work and the fine, fine tuning. So that's what's going on. It's, it's kind of an interesting thing. So I went to a very small lab that you've heard of. It's called Glidewell Dental Labs. And I said, well, well, how are you guys doing? I mean, you're the biggest lab around and you know, what's going on? And they said, well, every month we're getting more and more and more digital impressions. You might notice, I don't know if this little pointer thing works, there's a little hole in it over here that was COVID. So everybody was affected by COVID, but every month more and more and more and more, more digital impressions are coming in. So I said, okay, so you're getting digital impressions coming, where are they coming from? And I said, well, this is, this is just, a, this was the end of 2021. They said, well, they're getting from Itero, from Syria, from True Definition, from Trios, from Castream, from Mecca, Medit, and others. I said, well, well wait a second, uh, what is that Seric thing going over there? Well. We found that some of the CEREC users are doing one visit dentistry, but sometimes they don't feel like it. Sometimes they don't have the time. So they say, us, they, got, they take our scan, their scan, and send it to us, we make the crowns. And when I thought about it, right now, and this is not just about CEREC, if you do a digital scan and send it to a laboratory, the laboratory gets it right away, they can actually work on it immediately. And if the laboratory is close enough to you, or even with FedEx overnight, you can get the crown back in two days. So all of a sudden, the, the financial advantage, of course, one visit is one visit. But, you know, a couple of days, you don't have to make the world's finest temporary. I mean, you have to make it temporary, but that only has to last a couple of days and the, and the crown comes right back. So, again, think about things like this, about your workflow and the time that's going on. This really was intriguing. So then I said, well, what are people ordering? And so, as you know, Glidewell is sort of the inventor of, of zirconia. They have something called Bruxia. That's their brand name. But they, but they just, as an example, they said, that's fi only 56% of what we're doing. We're making mouth guards, splints, sleep appliances. We have Emacs CAD. And if you look carefully, it even says PFM and full cast gold. Well, how the heck are they making full cast gold with a digital scan? Simple. 3D printers. Now you say, well, those 3D printers, you know, the ones I've seen, how accurate are they? The ones we buy cost three or four thousand dollars. The ones they buy cost a half a million dollars. We're down into microns on these things, so it can be done. And they make digital dyes. They really, it's a lot of fun. We're not going to have time to get into three D printing too much, but well, that's just how it works. So what's out there? I mean, there's a zillion of them out there now. You know, there's some of the big names you've seen, and there's companies that you never heard of that are coming to the dental shows. It's just wild. So. It's a horse race too, because every single, I'll just say by name, let's say I was standing at the CEREC booth at a meeting and I'm some guy taps me on the shoulder. I look at his badge, he says, he's from 3Shape. And the guy standing next to him is from Itero. And what they're doing is they're all looking to see who has what and what's going on. And if Serona came out with something today, 
Reshape has it tomorrow, and, uh, and Serona has it the next day, and Dexas has it the next day, and Castrium has it the next day, and Medit has it the next day. So they're all, all watching. So the hardest part is when someone says, well, what's the best one? I said, at this minute, it could be the A, B, or C. So having said that, something crazy just happened in time for this presentation. In the past two weeks, two brand new scanners from two large, large companies, I'll have to keep you in suspense, but you'll be able to figure it out yourself. On, on September 15th, this company, I'll just tell you it's a German company, I won't tell the name, came out with a small version of their giant machine that sits with a laptop. And instead of you having to store all the information on the machine that you get, this laptop is connected to the cloud. It sits up, sends everything up to the cloud. That's brand new, brand new. And by the way, the cost is a little bit less than the machine. We call it the machine. And then not three days ago, another company came out with a very small version of, a, of their own scanner, completely wireless. And both of these systems are 30,000 or under. So, and, and I'm not, I don't know the exact prices, but these are just, you know, list prices, they call manufacturing, what is it, MSRP, things like that, brand new. And they just came out and I don't even have the information on them. So do a little homework and do a little looking around seeing what's going on with that whole thing. Some of you have never seen a scan. So let's just take this. This is a friend of mine, Naran Rajan. And he said, Let, why don't I show you this? It'll be a little quick video. This is what the scan looks like as it comes out. It's sort of a black and white initially. That's how the computer works it. And then it has the color. Wait till you see this. If you haven't seen one of these scans, how could the lab miss this? I mean, look at the margins. I mean, the guy's a good, he does a nice preparation. You can see the cord. He leaves the cord in. So this is what a digital impression looks like if you haven't seen one before. And that's what you're striving for. And again, the clar clarity, the accuracy, and the color is really nice. So this, this mysterious company from Germany has been around for over, over 30 years. And the early, up until about 2009, it was an interesting project, very expensive, interesting project. And a lot of people use these and people said, oh, this isn't, this, they're okay, but you know, the, the, the preparations are, the restorations are, they break and they're not this and they're not that. And it took a lot of time for all this to evolve to the date to what we have today. But this is where the whole thing went through. And so we know who the, the grandfather of, of the one visit dentistry and the scanners are. Uh, I'm not supposed to be product specific, but <clears throat> sir. I didn't, I didn't say that. Anyway, this is what they invented, one visit dentistry. And this is really interesting. So once the people started getting this one visit dentistry, you started looking at teeth differently. And if a tooth came in a different, well, with the patient attached to it, if someone came in and broke off a buccal cusp, for example, on a premolar, they had an old MOD and the buccal cusp came off, instead of building up the tooth and doing a crown and that lingual cusp, if that lingual cusp is solid, you could actually do a three-quarter crown. And some of these, these examples are just, you know, partial coverage restorations. The one in the middle, I don't know if I would actually do this with one little cusp like that, but we're just trying to do this by way of example. So why, why don't we do these all the time? Why not? Uh, those of you who've done inlays and onlays, it's a pain in the neck. The temporaries are just a pain in the neck. You put the temporaries in, they fall out, they break, they shatter. So you glue them in, you use all sorts of different things. And when the patient comes back, you have to re-anesthetize that patient. And that, that's, just, that's just the whole other project. But if you have the patient in the chair, you take the, the old restoration apart, and you make your one-visit dentistry, you can get these partial coverage restorations. And most of them are composites, a composite material. These are not zirconia. They bond in very nicely. They mill very quickly. So if you were doing a whole quadrant of MODs, for example, if you take out all the three MODs, it would take you the same amount of time to just take a scan and make mill a couple of these restorations as it would be to put a band on each one and finish the band and get the contour, get the contact of the next one, do the next one, do the next one. You'll find that once that's in your hands, you start seeing teeth a little differently. And the bottom left picture here is just there for kind of an interesting reason. A prep was done, a crown was made, and what you do is before you finish it, before you, you, can, you can try the crown in, and then you have an oven and you can stain and glaze it and do all sorts of things. In this particular case, the patient was in the chair, and here's the crown. It was the wrong shade. It was probably should have been one shade, one block uh, uh, darker. And anyway, so I said, okay, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, finish up the crown. And the patient said, well, that feels pretty good. Can I see it? I said, oh, sure. So they look in the mirror. They go, oh, my gosh. I have a white tooth. I've always wanted a white tooth. 
Can you just leave it the way it is? And, and we torture ourselves. We're doing upper second molars down the left. I need some gingival staining on the, on the upper second molar. We, we do this to ourselves. We're prepping and we're putting restorations in for ourselves to look at on recall, the, to impress our hygienists and to impress the next dentist who sees that patient. So I'm not saying you should do this all the time, but how many of you have had, had the good old days of, of PFMs where that was the king and you get a crown back with all these beautiful stains and the grooves and the patient goes, huh, oh, what's those brown things? I'm like, I'm wearing a brand new white tooth. So just, you know, think about these things. Well, the patients really understand this advantage of the one visit crown. So if you're listening on a computer right now, I have a little video I want to play for you. So I was watching TV one night and this nice man came on. You might recognize him, David Letterman. And this is before he had his big beard. And take a listen to what he had to say. The dentist yesterday. Oh, here we go. And every time you go to the dentist, they tell you one thing and then something else happens. You know what I'm saying? What happened? This well, uh, originally I was, uh, I don't know, eating, you know, you know, I love peanut brittle. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I busted off a hunk of something. You did? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so I went to the dentist and he says, oh, yeah, this is a thing. He says, I'm going to knock it out completely. So he knocks it out completely yesterday. And it's one of those deals where I get about a quart of Novocaine. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just now getting the feeling back in my elbows. Right, yes. Um, and and so, so he puts on he puts on a temporary, he says, this will be a two-part deal. He said, uh, but I have to put on a temporary thing. So they put all of that goo in your mouth. And you bite down, right down, and then the goo hardens, and then they pry your mouth open, and then they got a thing, and they put a temporary in there. And he says, you come back in two weeks, I'll put in the permanent. And I said, oh, well, gee, I, I don't know. How do I know? Well, he said, no, two weeks will be just fine, and we'll see you then. So then I have to leave, and then today, not even, not even 24 hours later, the <laughs> damn thing comes out. Ever it comes out. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, so I, I have like a, a hole in the side of my mouth the size of an above-ground pool. <laughs> And, and every now and then, I can't help putting my tongue in. Of course, your tongue goes ha, right there. Ha, oh. ha, ha. And I'm just now waiting for the nerve pain to return. Of course. It's that, uh, that electric... Oh! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> You know, it's sensitive to heat, it's sensitive to cold, and I, and, 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 and I hey, I'm supposed to wait two weeks? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> now we understand. <laughs> now... But I mean, my goodness, modern dentistry has been around for thousands of years. Modern dentistry. And, and, and look at all of the wonderful medical advancements we've made. Why can't they do it in one simple procedure? They should be. Why do I have to wait two weeks? Why do I have to walk around with some spare part in my mouth that I don't really want and it doesn't really work? It didn't even make it through lunch. The damn thing didn't even make it through lunch, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't even eat lunch. Oh. I take the little sarcasm? Is oh, that no. it? This is what makes someone like David Letterman, Jay Leno, so, so wonderful. that They take something simple and they make it into a complete hysterical story. So that says a lot. And so I also have a chance sometimes to speak to the dental laboratory, the dental laboratory technicians. And I talk to them and I say, well, you know, aren't you people afraid that, you know, we're going to have be making a lot of our crowns and you're going to be out of business? And they go, well, let's just say this. This is their attitude. We are the artists. You are the dentists. I mean, some dentists are great artists. I, I'm not saying you're not. This is, this is the attitude from the, from the laboratory. So, so, so be it. That Voices from the Bench is, that, is their, their little podcast that they, they will go to watch. So let me just show you something new in the newer, in the newer scanners. This was a video. I just took some screenshots from a video. A dentist had reprepped a, some old porcelain fused to metal, and they were doing all Emacs crown, Emacs CAD crowns. And the cuspid was very far subgingival, and he left it that way on purpose for demonstration reasons. It could have done some plasties and things, but he wanted to show the new scanners have a much better, quote, depth of field, if you remember from photography, depth of field. So you take a look down there, and you're looking down at a deep sulcus, and this is, this is, these are the new, newer scanners. And as a top view, you can see, this is, he's, he's actually pointing, he's on, his finger is on the screen. You can see right down into that sulcus, pretty far down. Some of, the, some of the new scanners can go down about seven or eight millimeters from top to bottom with a single scan. So when you're doing an occlusal 
scan is actually picking up the occlusal and the buckles and the linguals. So that's why they're so much faster because it's, the wider, it's, like, it's like a wider spread of what's going on. So I looked at that and I talked to my friends in Great Britain and said, so what do you guys think? And I said, you know what? Why don't we try to scan an implant? Because right now you have to, to do an implant impression. You have to put a little thing on it and screw it on and take an impression of that. What if we could just do a, an impression, digital impression, since this thing can go down six or seven millimeters, let's take a look at that. So they scanned a couple of, of implants and then they 3D printed it. And guess what? It didn't work. Probably the reason here was that you, they couldn't really pick up the threads because it couldn't go inside and see all the little threads. But they said that they could probably do an extrapolation if they knew this was a, let's say, a Strauman size, whatever, or three i shape, whatever it is. They probably could do an extrapolation and then do some sort of a software trick to let it happen. And this is part of how guided surgery works, too. But, you know, this can happen. This can happen. We never, in dentistry, we never say never. So these, these machines, the software, are just going on and on and on. So as you look at new products, there's new things to look at. So, for example, the color has gotten really, really good. HD color. And while they have HD color, they can actually do some color matching. Well, here's the problem. Let's look at this picture on the bottom on the right side. So with color match, we have A1 over here. We have C1 over here and D1 over here. How are we going to make that? I mean, how the heck are we going to make this? I mean, so it's night. You can do some surface staining, I suppose. You can take the basic shade of A1, then use some C1 stain, D1 stain. That's going to wear off after a while. So if you were building hand building porcelain, I suppose you could hand build the colors and get them all to work in that way too. Or down the road, maybe, maybe 3D printing will answer this question. So if you have a 3D printer and you can put in different colors into the 3D printer, technically you might be able to do something along these lines. But it gives you anyway, it gives you a baseline to work from. That's one of the things about shade matching. So one of the things about this 3M scanner that I worked on from, with Brontes is we found that if you sprayed powder on the, on the prep, the computer could see the tooth better. And you go, what? I mean, <laughs> if you dumped a bunch of powder on the prep, you just messed up the prep. You can't, you know, what happens to your accuracy? Well, that's not powdering. When we worked with 3M, they said we had a special powder machine, a little, little sprayer, and that's powder. And what you're seeing is little tiny dots all over the place. We call it pixie dust. And what it allowed the computer to do, it could see everything that's going on, but the computer could actually see the little dots. And 3M had proven, as, as my friends from MIT did, that this is more accurate than just a plain scan. And if you went to one of the other manufacturers, they have to say, yes, indeed, if you did a light dusting, you'd be more accurate. We're talking about 1%, maybe 2% more accuracy, and we're already accurate down to microns, so is this really something to do? So in the, in the evolution here, the next step of this particular scanner from 3M, which actually was sold to Midmark, incidentally, uh, they're, getting, they're gonna hopefully get rid of the powder. So this is, this is something that, that, that and then Syracuse powder way, way back and things like that. So there's nothing wrong with the powder, but there's no reason to use it anymore. 2017, a giant step came up. One of the companies said, we're getting rid of the wire. I said, what's the big deal? Well. There's a little bit of a drag on your hand. So if, and if, if any hygienists are watching at all, they know that if you're using a cordless hygiene pan piece, it's a lot easier on the wrists. And so the, the wireless scanner had a lot of advantages just in terms of the ergonomics, but also you could walk around. You, you weren't stuck in a certain spot to it. The patient could move a different way. You could have the computer in a different way. You could have computers in different rooms and go room to room if you had the receivers in different rooms. This was a giant step. So there were right now three, I, went to, I think there were three, on the, three in the marketplace that are wireless, and there's a slight increase in cost for it, but the people who use them say, wow, this is just a great thing. And then we have all sorts of other enhancements. And one of them, the very first picture on the, on the left side here, shows something else going on. Some of the new software allows you to take multiple bites, or actually almost like a little video of, of lateral excursions. And that will solve that problem of the, ultimately when you have a patient coming in with this crown that was built in centric, they slide from side to side. So this is going to be very, very good. There's also other software coming out there. You can take pre-op and post-op things. And look at this, dentures. You can take a copy of a denture. You can scan an existing denture with your hand scanner inside and outside and actually duplicate that denture and 
if we had time to talk about 3D printing, you could actually send it to a 3D print. Over here, we're talking about taking a digital impression of an edentulous mouth. At this minute, there's no way to get border molding. So if you do take a full arch scan, for example, on an upper, what you're going to get is a base plate that sits in and falls right out because there's no suction. So still at this minute, to do digital dentures, you can do a scan. And let's say you had a 3D printer. You could do a scan, 3D print the tray, but you're going to have to take an impression in that tray with this traditional border molding. And, and then from there, you would scan that, and that goes into a digital denture workflow. So right this second, digital dentures are digital in the, in the performance, in the, in the manufacturing, but you still need to start off with some sort of a regular impression as of this minute to be continued. To be continued. This is another piece of software that, that some of the companies are using, comparative software. You can scan a patient today and scan them in a few months, and let's say you're following bruxism. Well, it'll actually let you overlay the two, the two models, and it says, oh, we've lost a thousandth of an inch over here, or a millimeter over here from bruxing. You can actually see the bruxing patterns, or abfractions, or abrasions. You can follow recession, things like that, digitally. These are all parts of the technology. So when you're looking at a brand new, when you're looking at a brand new piece of equipment and a brand new scanner, say, do you have this? One of the companies calls this time lapse. Do you have this this system? So these are the things you should be looking for as you're going along. I mentioned color matching before. Excuse me. And this just made me laugh. This is one of the companies that said we have color matching. We call it who's the marketing people? Bidirectional reflectance distribution function. It's a very cool system. It shows texture, it shows translucency, and all sorts of things like that. But why not just call it fancy color matching? Why did they come up with these names? This is, this is all marketing. So this makes me laugh because I'm always watching these things. What about artificial intelligence? Well, let's say you were scanning and the tongue got in the way. You move the tongue out of the way and you rescan. The computer says, oh, the tooth is over here. Let's get rid of the tongue or your finger is on there, or a glove is on there, or something else is in the way. So artificial intelligence is also coming into the scanning system. So again, ask your manufacturer, you're using AI, can you get rid of external things automatically? Because the old days, you had to cut it away. You had to cut, trim it back, cut it. The new, the new systems have artificial intelligence, all the new software, and that will, hopefully all of us will have it. And then we have other things to look at. I was at a recent meeting in Germany, and I found this. I'm sorry, I was in Germany. This was in, this was in, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. How about this? $9,000 scanner. I don't know anything about the scanner. I was able to scan at the booth and it looked pretty good, but how do I know if it's any good? Who knows? 9,000 bucks. In Germany, I found this, a scanner that was being developed by the Voco Corporation. And they said, well, we have something special we're trying to do. We're trying to make it look through tissue. Look through tissue? If we can make this thing work, there won't be any retraction. And that was 2019. I said, wow, 2019. It's now 2022. So I, I met with the company recently. And I said, well, what's up with this thing? So, well, I had to stop. A couple of things. It's very, very costly to make this. So to make it affordable for dentistry, it was, it was very tough. And good old chip shortage is, is a factor, too. And we just found we were putting way too much money into this project to get something that may not be affordable with the dentist. We're not done, but right now it's not there. So don't wait, don't wait too long for this. And then I have to show you an interesting product that I came across. And it's interesting for not so much for the, much for the product, but how it was developed. We have to sometimes do retraction. And so when you do retraction for the scanning, you're usually using mirrors or retractors and then metal and, and the lights flash off of it and can cause some problems. So a very entrepreneurial dental assistant named Sherry Lipinski. I think I'm blocking her on my, anyway, she's, I think my, my face is blocking her. Anyway, she's a dental assistant and said, I'm having a problem retracting, but why not make a black retractor? And so she developed a black soft retractor on a little articulating arm that was autoclavable and came up with a product called ScanMate. And it's a very, very cool product, but she was persistent. And here's someone who had a dental assistant who had this dream of a, of coming up with a product. She figured out how to make it. She had some people make it for her. She ended up selling the product all over the place and she's making some money. Now she's on to her next product. So the entrepreneurial spirit is here. So 
So if you have an idea, don't say, oh, I don't know, this will never work. She's really, really done great leading. I'm going to go through a little quickly some other products that I came across. This one I also found in Germany, holograms. So when you, oh, those of you who are scanning, you're looking to the left or to the right, looking at the screen somewhere. This is a hologram of your scan right in front of you. So as you're scanning, it pops up in front of you. This is virtual reality glasses. It costs about $2,000 to $2,500. Very, very cool thing. So again, these are things that I see when, when I'm bouncing around the dental aisles. So I keep bumping up with this thing, IDS 2019. Every two years in Cologne, there's a meeting called the International Dental Show, except for 2021. 160,000 dentists go to this thing. And it's if you can imagine the Hinden meeting or the Chicago Midwinter meeting or Yankee meeting or one of the larger meetings, California meeting, in a, in a big convention center, take that convention center and make three levels of that so it's on three levels, and then take that and have six buildings with three levels. That's the International Dental Show. So when you go through the show, there's a minimum of 20,000 steps on your Fitbit, smell of Fitbit. And it's just a great, great show. There is no CE. It's in Cologne every year in March, every other year in March. Something to see if you're a junkie. It's worth taking this trip. Um, they had to shut it down in COVID in 2021. They tried to do it again later in the year. It didn't really work out. So the next time in Cologne is this May 14th to 18th. It's just a candy store for me anyway. And it's, it's not just digital. It's all, it's everything. Materials and, and, and restoratives and, and the booths are gigantic. And you sit in the booth. There are chairs and seats, little tables and chairs in the booths. And while you're sitting down talking to the manufacturer, they say, you know, like a beer? A beer? Sure. How about some sushi? We have a sushi chef over here. I was like, a sandwich. It's, there's nothing like this show. Nothing like this show. And they have live surgery. You go to a booth and they're showing how to do some implants and surgery. So this is quite the show. That just so if it's in, so if you want to get information, just look up International IDS 2023. You'll find all the information that you want about it. So another thing we can do is, is if you have one of the scanners that does not come with a mill or have a mill attached to it, you can add a mill to the scanner. So one of the first companies that did this was this nice man. He has, he's a very, very fine gentleman in the dental, the, the dental profession. His name happens to be Jim Glidewell. There is a real Mr. Glidewell, Jim Glidewell. He's a CDT, started out with a small lab and exploded into this great thing. He's a great, great thinker and a great visionary. And he has said, said, well, you know what, why don't we do this? I'll take my million dollars, my million dollar or so uh, mill. Let me dumb it down and squish it down to make a little mill that's desktop. And it does kind of the same thing. We do a little bit slower, not as, not as efficient, but you can, I'll sell you one of these things. And not only will he sell you one of these things, he'll actually come along with, sell you his software with it, the Glidewell software. So you could actually have Glidewell in a box. You could have a scanner and get this Glidewell system and have it have the design software and the mill that's that's used the glidewell. Is it the same? Not quite, but it's pretty darn good. A lot slower, a lot less less efficient, but very, very robust. So this was just an idea. And now all of a sudden, there are a lot of companies that sell mills. There are there are probably a dozen companies that sell different mills, different sizes, different costs, anywhere from I've seen them from as low as 15,000 to as much as 60,000. Each one does something different. So learn a little bit about mills. But if you get a mill, if it wasn't the Glidewell mill, you need a design program. So you also have to get uh, your hands on the design program. This happens to be one called ExoCAD. And this is called ExoCAD Chairside. So the laboratories actually use ExoCAD. They use 3Shape. But this is a program that you can purchase. And it makes you crowns. It does the same type of design build as some of the other systems do. Very, very cool program. But the ExoCAD company is working very hard with the milling companies and trying to partner with them. And they want to be like, like when you buy a computer, it says Intel inside. They're trying to get some of the, some of the mill companies to have ExoCAD inside. So it's a bundled package. So when you do buy a mill, if it has the ExoCAD mill attached to it, you're buying the one that all you really need is your scanner and then someone to tell you how to figure this whole thing out and make it all work. So that's just another way that make this thing go. You can also have people do this for you. Some of the manufacturers, some of the distributors, Patterson's, the Shines, the Benko's, the uh, uh, all, all the different companies who combine these things for you if you want to do it that way. It's not like putting a stereo together. And this is your, your workflow. It just looks like this. You have, you have the scanner, you have the printer, you have the bills, you have all these things, the software. So this is how the workflow would go. And if you don't want to have it done, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can have companies help you set this whole thing up together. And it's sort of still one-stop shopping. So I want to finish up quickly 
So one of the other things that's out there is something called a cone beam. And I'm not being facetious. So once you get into a scanning system and a cone beam system, you can start putting these things together and they work together. And you can make things happen. And this is where we get into implant planning, a thing called guided surgery. And you can see, you can superimpose the scan on the cone beam scan and do all sorts of treatment planning with that. This is another example over here. We're seeing a, a cone beam scan. I'll give you give me a minute to show you a little bit about the cone beam scans. If you're not familiar with the scans themselves, you get to see this is a cross section of the lower. It makes sense to just slice it through. Think of a slicer, think of a bologna slicer. So you just pick the slices through, peel through, and say, I want to see down to the apex. You can just move down to the apex. This is nice in 3D. Just so you know, this is your first lesson in, in cone beam. If you've never seen cone beam, this is a very typical scan. This is the palate over here. There are the sinuses up above it. This is the upper molars on one side, the upper molar on the other side. This is your this is your the mandible over here. There's the teeth in the mandible on both sides. So that's the front, front view. And if you look here, there's a little dot over there. That's the mandibular canal. And again, you play with the software. This is the anterior shot. Upper centrals, lower centrals, chin. And you can move back and forth and up and down through them. And, and that's what this is all about. And that's your, that's your quick lesson on cone beam. And this is just a little piece of software that takes the cone beam. It tells you that you can put an implant over here. It tells you exactly which way to put the implant in, how long it should be, where it should be, the depth of it, and superimpose your scan. And it shows you where the crown will be. So you don't get an uh, implant done. The implant's sitting 45 degrees out this way, and your button's coming out 25 degrees that way. And that's how that all works. And this is a 60 second view of what the software looks like. So it's just, it's just as a quick demo so you can see what the real thing looks like when you're working with it. You just bounce around, there's your scan. You can take a look at the, you can move it around, make some decisions on that. You align it with, these, with the actual scan. They put these things together. And again, I'm, I'm rushing through like a six hour project over here. Zoom through the slices like that and make, make your decisions on what to do, how it all works. And that's so. That's the uh, that's guided surgery in six in six seconds. So, what if you have the in's office mill and the design, and you're running late, and you say, "Gee, I don't have time to make my design." Well, there are companies that'll do it for you. So there are companies you can export your scan to, and you can you let you literally can call them on the phone or send them an email or text and say, "Can you make me the crown?" And you do your scan, you push a button, send it out to the company, and some of them give it right back to you. They'll do it right on the spot and shoot it right back to you. Or overnight, they shoot it to your mill. So you come in the morning and your crown is finished, things like that. There were a couple, so there's a couple that's called design and build. So I'm throwing a lot at you here. I mean, this is, this is like the tip of the iceberg. There are companies out there and, and, and groups out there and universities out there and, and independent, independent agencies out there that do tests of all the of all these scanners. And they say, this one works this way, this one works this way. The, the comparatives, they tell you what, which things go around. Manufacturers have things, but you're walking into a, a minefield because this would be, for example, this is a, a company that shows the trueness of 12 inch oral scanners and the full arch, blah, blah, blah. And what they're the main thing they were showing here is these little dots, arch to arch, cross arch, dot to dot, second molar to second molar. That has to be absolutely accurate. And so they, just, they look at all the scanners and say, this one is absolutely accurate. This one is not. If you're not accurate from, from second molar to second molar cross arch, and you're doing it in a fixed case, implant case, or some sort of a, a, some sort of a, a bar or something like that, if that's not accurate, accurate, you're going to be messed up in simple English. So these are the, these are the ones that pass the test, like Terra, Prime Skin, Omnicam, the Pastream, Trios, things like that. So this is just where you can get some more information. So we're almost out of time. But I'd like to tell you that there is something called 3D printing, and I think it deserves a presentation on its own, but we're out of time. So all I can say to you is keep get, get in touch with me, drpaulatooththeory.com. Uh, also, as you know, I'm the, I'm the editor-in-chief of Dentistry Today, and I'll just be honest with you. If any of you think you have some nice cases, I'll be glad to take a look at these cases, and we can present them in the magazine, and you might say to me, well, I don't know how to write. Well, if you have a decent case, you just have to tell the story. And that's what the editing people like myself are there for. So I give you a welcoming hello to if you want to uh, get involved in, in, in writing for the magazines. And some of my compatriots have also been giving some, some lectures on this same forum from Dental Economics and Bell Products Report. We're all friends. So 
anybody out there. You don't have to be a superstar. You can be the next superstar. So I think that will, will t- give it, that'll probably knock it out for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one. Bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening. And preventing gum disease. We're gonna do a lot of learning. And have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists.